this week we turn our little micro into a big noise. Plug this into your spectrum and turn it into a drum kit. We'll also be examining some of the anomalies of the government's Data Protection Act. And in America, Freff discovers why teaching robots to work in dangerous places can be an uphill struggle. If your micro has joined the skateboard and hula hoop up in the attic, now's the time to get it down, dust it off and do something creative with it, like making music. Even the Spectrum with its uh, limited sound facilities can make a good noise, provided you've got the right add-on. This here is the Spec Drum, which comes from Cheetah. It costs £29.95, and at the moment it's only available from Boots. It plugs into the expansion port here at the back, and it does need an amplifier. You see, there's no onboard speaker. Well, you've just heard one of the 11 rhythm patterns supplied as part of the software. But the fun part is building up your own patterns. To do that, I select P from this menu page here. And now I've got a choice. I can either code the beats in one at a time along these bars, a bit academic that, or I can play it in real time, which I prefer to do. So, real time. Now, I've got eight different drums here to play with. There's a kick, which is a bass drum snare, tom-toms, cowbell, hi-hat, and so on. Uh, and I think I'll start off with the, the kick, that's the sensible one. So, write that. Now, it's got two bars there which it's remembered and it keeps playing them back to me. And I can alter that if I, if I want to, but no, I'm quite happy with it. So I think I can add a snare on top of that. Here we go. A bit, bit messy, but never mind. I could tidy it up later on. Now, I'll add something on top of that. A uh, bit of cowbell there. That's voice five. Right, if I remember that lot, I could build up more tracks if I want to. You've probably noticed that, to a certain extent, it's tidied up what I've done, so you don't really need to be a drummer at all to use it. In fact, it's rather like a, a word processor for drums. You can build up sequences as long and as complex as you like. At the moment, this is only available for the Spectrum, but they are hoping to bring out a version for the Amstrad early next year. Well, uh, yes, thank you very much, Ringo. Many micros, of course, have got much better sound facilities than the Spectrum. Well, just have a listen to this. Believe it or not, that's a standard Commodore 64. It hasn't got any add-ons. It's running the advanced music system from Firebird Software. Now, that package is a very good example of the kind of thing to look for in music software. I've been joined by Tony Selinger of Firebird. Hello. Welcome, Tony. Now, how do you go about coding in a pattern like that? Well, it's very, very simple, really. In the programme, we have three parallel tracks that we can record on independently. And to enter notes onto them, we can have any length of note, or any length of rest, or, in fact, any note at all, which is shown by this icon here. So I can just finish off this melody to finish off the piece that I've been programming by putting the right notes in. So let's start there. Let's have that. Oh, I think you hear it as it goes. We do, but we've got the wrong uh, envelope number there. And then we put that in. Ah, now there's a bar line. Did you put that in? No, the computer did it automatically because we've told it that this piece is in 3-4 time, so it's put the bar line in in the right place. Now we can finish this off with a nice long note and a repeat bar. Enter that. We can listen to the piece that we just played. That's just the melody. Bar. That's just the melody. Now we can listen to all three voices together. That's quite complicated. What, what can you do with that now that you've composed your piece? Well, there are a whole range of word processor-like facilities that you can use. You can define blocks, block edit, block delete, cut and paste, all that sort of thing. And all those functions are accessed through one of four pull-down menus that are available all the way through the program. Actually, visually, this is a very good package because it's got those which are clear. It's also got conventional music notation at the bottom here. But what's all this at the top? Well, there are a certain number of icons here. This one is a bar meter device which shows you how full your memory is in each of the voices. This tells us which bar we're working on. This is our volume level, and this is our envelope. Yes, we heard a few envelopes, didn't we? There. Um, how do you build up the envelopes? Well, in the computer, we've got uh, three separate sound generators, and each of those are capable of having filters and different ADSRs put on them. So uh, we do that in our synthesizer module. 
which is down here. I see. Now, what are all these icons here? Well, this represents the module that we were just looking at, the editor. This is the keyboard, allows you to put music in real time from the Commodore keyboard. A linker, which allows you to string together music files that you've already created to make long pieces. A printer, which you can get hard copy print out of your composition, and you can add lyrics to it at that stage. Now, here we are in a synthesizer module, and we can listen to the piece that we just wrote. Now we can see they're all playing on voice four, on uh, envelope four. So let's dial up envelope four and have a look at what we're actually listening to. That's the shape of it. And I can change that very, very simply. Let's make it into a shorter, shorter sort of sound, a more plucked sound. Oh, yes, a bit like a banjo, isn't it? Yeah, so it's very simple. You make it look very easy to use. Well, actually, I have had a chance of playing with the BBC version of this, and it, it's not too difficult at all. Um, my one criticism is that it always sounds... I don't know, the, the, the sound has no colour to it. It's, it's very flat. Well, micros will always sound like micros unless you add some extra hardware onto the back. But this is why we've added the MIDI module here, the sixth module, which allows you to connect up to a MIDI-equipped synthesizer. So, using this, you can control a fully-fledged synth? Yes, you can. Right, thank you very much, Tony. You're welcome. Well, Tony mentioned MIDI there. What's MIDI? Well, to find out, making his first appearance, here's Alan Townsend. About three years ago, musical instrument manufacturers got together to decide on an interface system that would allow anybody's electronic musical instrument to connect to anyone else's. And they came up with MIDI. They chose a five-pin DIN plug for the <coughs> hardware connection, as it's both cheap and it's reliable. And information is sent one message at a time from one device to the other. And each message takes only 320 microseconds. This is a, a MIDI synthesizer. <laughs> If I connect it with this MIDI cable to an electronic piano, then as I play the synthesizer, you'll be able to hear the piano playing as well. I'll just turn down the synthesizer so we can now only hear the piano. So what information can we send? I think the most important is key event information, which will tell the piano which notes I'm playing and when I'm playing them. And it will also send dynamic information, which is how hard I hit each note. And rhythm units can receive that same information. This is a MIDI synthesizer module, and it doesn't have its own keyboard, so it can only be played by MIDI. And this will respond to pitch bend information, and also aftertouch, which can bring in vibrato or other effects as I press on the keyboard. <laughs> So, by using MIDI, up to 16 different instruments can be independently controlled because you assign each one a MIDI channel number. And this is really useful when they're to be played by a, a sequencer or a computer. In this computer music setup. Then watch Saturday Supersaw tomorrow morning. That's unless you're watching the Micro Live repeat, in which case you've missed it. Next Friday, Mac will be looking at the IBM's impact on the personal computer industry in a special report called Big Blue and the Forty Dwarves. So, until 7 o'clock next week, it's good night, good night. from us.